here we are, Funnel OS 2404.3. They've just released the 2510 version, which considering they claim they're based on the LTS, is rather strange, because um, that's not an LTS, that's a nine month job. So I went for the 2404.3. Post install, I installed OBS Studio and FFmpeg and Pavu Control because there is no mixer software on this whatsoever. I guess you just go in naked unless you want to record anything with relatively decent audio and I hope that's what we've got. So this is it. This is FunOS 2404.3. The only things I've installed, as I said, was the FFmpeg, Pavu Control and OBS Studio, which has brought in the VLC media player. So everything else is as it comes. Being based on Ubuntu 2404, I had no problems with any of my hardware working. The Wi-Fi worked, the mic worked, the headphone outputs work, the audio works, the screen was the right size, everything fine. Now, although this is based on 2404 Ubuntu, it has got no snaps and it has got no flat packs, which is great, which is pretty much what I need. The desktop environment is JWM, so it's very, very bare bones, old school, stripped down. But this is what you get. You get your terminal, you get your file manager, which is PCMan FM, which is a damn good file manager. Does what you need it to do. It's very nice indeed. I like the theming too. Pretty, pretty pleased with the theming out of the box. Um, yeah, very nice. Uh, you get a text editor, which is gedit. Gedit? No, nope, mousepad. Mousepad. There you go. Says it right in the top bar. Mousepad. You get the web browser, which is Firefox ESR. And you've got nitrogen to set your wallpapers, which we are going to do right now. These are the wallpapers it comes with. Uh, I did find one in my explorations that I really rather liked. This one. And apply. So that, that one's a little bit too XP and that Green Hills JPEG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not try to remember the old Microsoft shenanigans. What are these? Hmm. Sorry, I'm a little bit distracted by the old Desert Island thing. I've just been reading the Lucy Irvin book, Cast Away, and also the Gerald Kingsland Islander book. So I'm all Robinson Crusoe-y at the minute in my mind, and wishing that I was in reality. Every day that goes by, I wish I was on a little desert island all on my own, away from it all. But anyway, this is what we're going with. I think it looks quite nice. Nice little track into the distance, and there's, well, they could do with being a more, few more trees, but there's the promise of more over there, look. Get through these green fields to the woods. Sounds stonkingly good to me. Okay, then you've got the documentation, which takes you to their website, which gives you information on how to install things, because there's no, there's not even a synaptic package manager or a software center or anything like that on here. You go to there and it tells you how to install various things, including games, including uh, productivity software, and so on and so forth. Under your settings, you get the customized look and feel. You get the keyboard and mouse controls, your light DM GTK greeter settings, your monitor settings, Pavu control I put on. You don't get that by default. Text editor settings and the X screensaver settings. Under accessories, again, file manager PC Man FM, you get the calculator, you get an image viewer. Again, the light DM GTK greater settings, and again, mouse pad. You got your screenshot tool, Vim. You get your X archiver, and again, your wallpaper changer. Under development, you've got the icon browser. Under graphics, you get a document viewer and the image viewer again. So a lot of these are, you know, here multiple times. Under internet again, your Firefox ESR. Under multimedia, you get LX Music, a simple music player. 
you get SM player and you get MPV media player. VLC, Pavi Control and OBS are mine. Under Office, just the document viewer. So if you're going to write letters, you're going to need a word processor or just do it in the text editor. Under System, again, PC Man FM, LX Terminal, again, like the MGTK greeter settings, and the Task Manager, the wonderful, wonderful Task Manager. Now then, I've had a lot of comments about memory usage and stuff. Now look, your memory's there to be used, okay? And if you've got a high read in it, probably just means a lot of your memory has been cached, as in set aside for stuff that you will be wanting to do, you know? This happens. Memory's there to be used. Do you want to have gazillions of gigs of RAM and never use it? Why would you do that? Why would you have that? What would be the actual point of that? Surely the point of the memory is to be using it. Um, now, there's different ways of reading how much RAM has been used. For example, I'll show you. Now, this is going to be unnaturally high because I am screen recording. So let's get the X term up, or let's get the LX term up and do the command free dash M. That tells us we're using 873 megs. We've got 2,539 free, and we've got 635 buffered and cached, and available 2,854. Now at the same time, if I was to bring up the task manager. Now that says 565, 570. Bearing in mind we are screen recording. So let me just run this one again to see how that see how it um, has updated now that it's running the task manager as well. Okay. So who do you believe? There's a good 300 meg difference in that reading so yeah always be sure you know what the readings it's giving you consist of let's install htop and then run that. See now HTOP is probably the one to actually go for because this tells you it's saying we're using 699 700 meg whereas this is saying 588 to 600 meg but this tells us shows us the difference there's the actually in use and then there's the buffered and cached in the different colors there so this one says 695 that one says 586 that's a hundred meg difference let's quit out of htop and run 3m again and that's saying 912 who do you believe where are you getting your information from to compare with my information of what I say it's using. Uh, it might seem a lot more. It just depends what you're using to read it and what it, what that program has used to get that figure. Is it including buffered and cached, is it not? It all varies. And it all varies machine to machine as well, depending on the resources available. If there's more, it'll, it will, um, it will, It'll call them more to do a particular task. And are you using swap? It all varies. So, um, yeah. The one does not equate to the other. So it's only ever a ballpark figure. And again, this ballpark figure here, you have to take into account that I'm running OBS Studio and recording. Yes, so, that thing. <laughs> Shall we have a look at the theming? Now, these are the themes. Now, I would imagine that these are just for the menu and taskbar. Let's go pretty pink, shall we? Well, wait a minute. What are we at the minute? 
we are darker. We are water dark. Mm, no, I don't think we are. I think we're out darker. Yeah, I think we're out darker. Uh, if we go, if we go black. Oh no, maybe we'll no, because look, the highlight for the menus is different. Okay. Blue day. Seems a bit lighter. I can't remember what it actually looked like. I think it was blue day. Brown. No, that's that's not nice. Um, Buntu. Wonder what that could be based on. Oh, yeah. I would generally leave these alone. I think I'll go back to. Oh, Numix Dusk. Let's try that. Nah, nah, nah. I'm going to go back to Blue Day. I quite like that. Yeah, that seems all right. Um, let's have a look at customize look and feel. This will be for our widgets, as in whatever's inside the windows and the icons used and so forth. See, we're on Numix. So maybe it is Numix. Let's just go Numix then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll do. Numix, we've got Rally, which is the bog standard basic Windows 95. Look. Is it? It used to be. Guess it's not now. Okay, Numix. High contrast, that will scorch your eyes. Adwaita Dark and Adwaita, you know what these look like. Colour, well, we're using the um, widget colour scheme. The icons, wow, we've got a lot. I like Numix, so I'll stick with Numix. There's Papyrus and various others. Uh, yeah, Papyrus. Yeah, Papyrus Dark, which you won't see any difference there. Papyrus Light, which you will notice these things became more visible. Ubuntu Mono Dark. No, I'm going to stick with Numix. Your mouse cursor, you just get with whiter. There is only one. The font, well, you can change it. You can enable hinting and change the hinting styles, subpixel geometry, RGB, and all them don't know what any of them do. Under other, toolbar style, text below icons, large toolbar icon, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'll go with that. It's fine. And um, yeah, Fun OS. Basically, you can have fun with it, but you've got to install the stuff yourself and you've got to use the terminal to do it. So if you're afraid of the terminal like a big old scaredy cat, this ain't for you. But if you want a low resource hogging Ubuntu based, snap free, flat pack free, actually, we've got to do it, haven't we? We've got to see. If they're true to their word, give me that, give me that terminal. There will be no snaps, I know this much, because that is there. Yeah, fine. And um Right, perfect. Well I'm a happy bunny. This'll do for my little underpowered supposedly Windows eleven capable <laughs> Hewlett Packard 14S-DQ0XXX 50 quid laptop. Yeah, that's me signing out. FunOS 2404.3. Goodbye.